the aforementioned Seth Wickersham of the Mothership, and uh, he, he joins us now after a very, very detailed column talking about Bill Belichick and going to Carolina. If I would have told you six months ago, Bill is going to coach again, and it's going to be college, you would have said what? <laughs> I would have said I'm not coming on your show because that's ridiculous. <laughs> Um, yeah, good to see you. I, I think this is really interesting. And um, we've all been wondering, like, wh you know, what dest where he would land, right? Because he made clear to everybody that he was coach, he was going to coach in 2015, and or 2025, no matter what the situation was, he was going to coach, everyone assumed he would be the NFL. And each week since the start of the NFL season, he and his former Patriots assistants, a, a cluster of them, all of whom are not working right now, would get on Zooms and go through every game, every team, every situation, every roster move, contract, scheme, trend, the type of like football deep dives that only they could do. And it was all about the NFL. The subtext of it all was what teams are going to have openings, what teams might consider Bill, and what teams would Bill like to work for? And then about halfway through the season, some of that shifted and it college teams added onto it where he wanted to dissect certain programs, study certain um, schools. And I think that when you, when you look at the frequency with which he visited colleges this season, and then the fact that North Carolina really, really wants him, it's been a while since he's probably felt wanted to coach football. Um, I think that's why the, this makes a makes it a good fit. But man, it, I, I was I was definitely surprised by it. Okay, is he running from the NFL or running to North Carolina? Great question. I think a little bit of both. Um, it's unclear whether he would have gotten a job this year. They went through all the scenarios in terms of what they thought he might be able to get. And remember, a lot of this is kind of a, a weird aside, but a lot of the, the back channel communication that owners might have with reps or camps with protect with prospective coaches has really dried up because of the Brian Flores lawsuit, which is now in its second year. Um, it's still ongoing, his discrimination lawsuit. So no owner really wants to get caught telling a coach that he's the guy. So Let's look at some of the situations with the Giants on paper that made, you know, that looked like a natural fit. But Belichick actually, you know, thinks Brian Dayball should continue on as the coach there. And I don't think he wants to take over for Dayball. The Jets are a non-starter. Um, the Cowboys, you just don't know if Jerry Jones values coaches that much. The Jacksonville Jaguars could have been a fit, but was it a perfect fit? And then you have college where I, I think that like Belichick – there was something about the challenge in doing something new that was invigorating for him. I had no idea about his sort of reverence for the University of North Carolina, but um, I think that's why it all kind of kind of makes sense. And I think that like you know he's been disenchanted and frustrated with like what he perceives is the NFL becoming more political, more crowded at the top. It's harder to run teams. And as someone familiar with his thinking said, this is a big fu to the NFL going to college. Of course, the NFL gave him a big F you, you know, about a, about a year ago when he, they had seven job openings and he didn't get any of them. But also I look at college now and it, it's as close as it's ever been to a pro model with, mm -hmm. you know, that the transfer portal is free agency. Um, sure. There's, there's less structure that clutter, you know, you don't have to wait for your draft pick to try to get a quarterback. And I, I look at a lot of positives here but what do you think is going to be the one hurdle that he has to overcome to be a great college coach? I think schematically he's going to be very innovative. And I think that's going to be really interesting to watch. I mean, we see a lot of sort of performance inflation on the college level with offensive statistics. And I think that he will be a terrific answer to that. I think to answer your question, it's going to be recruiting. I mean, obviously you have the country and he college football, I think, you know, has become a little bit of a cult of personality type of thing. You see it with Davo Sweeney. You see it. You saw it with Saban. You see it with Deion Sanders, certainly. And, you know, I think he certainly has that element. Um, you know, I do think that 
you know, how he negotiates w- with an 18 year old, you know, who, who wants to um, come to North Carolina is considering various options. That'll be interesting. Tom Brady, of all people, you know, I don't know if you saw the clip, but on Fox this past weekend, he was asked, you know, how do you think Bill will do? And, you know, he, his recruiting pitch was kind of like, like, we don't even really want you, but I guess if you want to come, we'll see if you can play. <laughs> I think there's a lot of truth to that. And that will be interesting. But I think that like his ability to relate with quote unquote today's athlete, I think is one of the underappreciated aspects of his coaching ability. And I think that in 2006, he gave, he was given an award, like a distinguished lecturer award at um, Southern Connecticut. And I went to see it and I thought it was going to, I was kind of terrified because I thought it would be like a two hour um, press conference. <laughs> and you know, it was packed with students. There was like 400 students and he was just awesome and he was inspiring and he was engaged. And it wasn't these sort of trite cliches about how football prepares you for the real world. He actually wanted to talk to the kids about their transitions into the real world, regardless of what their passions were. And I'll never forget. He said one of the proudest moments in his life is when he turned down a job in finance to go work for the Baltimore Colts out of Wesleyan for $24 a week. I think he's really going to look forward to shaping those young minds and not all the ones who go on to the NFL. How important was Don Shula's record? I think it was important to him, but it wasn't the thing. (laughs) It's not the thing that gets him out of bed every morning. And I think that, again, he surveyed the landscape. He wasn't sure he was going to get an NFL job, which is still kind of crazy. I mean, let's let's be honest. You watch him on TV, and he's explaining these game management situations that coaches in the NFL screw up so bad, and he's not coaching. I mean, there's something that just seems broken about that when he's trying to explain why Matt Eberflus screwed up the end of the game against Detroit. This is stuff he knows how to do in his sleep, and it doesn't reflect well in the league, but it's the way it is, and I think that, like, he needed to make a decision. And I think that in his career, whenever he's been at a career crossroads, he is completely unafraid to take control of that situation and take matters of it into his own hands. And I think that's what he did here. Would he have been interested in another coaching job, another university? Sure. I think so. I mean, I, and I why didn't other, if I get word that Bill Belichick yeah. is open to coaching in college, I was surprised I didn't hear any other, uh, you know, whatever they are now, chancellors, presidents going, hey, Bill, what about Boston College or wherever? Um, But he didn't didn't get any other offers. That was, yeah, that was it. Dang. It was, uh, yeah, it it is. It's, it's, It's both kind of how it's been since he was let go by the Patriots. And it's still shocking, but that's kind of the norm right now. And I think that, Again, I think he really wanted to be at a place wherever it was that he just felt wanted. And I think you could tell yesterday, you know, that felt like one of the best days of his professional life. More likely in three years, North Carolina is in the playoffs or Bill <laughs> Belichick is not coaching in college. Um, I would I would go with the former. I would go with the former. Okay. I mean, I think he's going to be a terrific schematic coach. Will he be able to bridge the gap in the talent level that you see between like the very top programs in college football and kind of the mid-tier ones? We'll see. But I mean, you know, nobody is better at taking a collection of people. Nobody's been better over the past 25 years at taking a collection of, of, of talent and turning it into a real team. And there's no reason to think he can't do that at the college level and actually have a lot of fun doing it. I know you have a book coming out. And it's uh, what American Kings, a biography of the quarterback available now for pre-order. That'll be coming out this next September. Is that right? Don't worry. I'll bug you. You'll know. Okay. When it comes <laughs> okay. <out. laughs> okay. At what point do you start working on your Belichick, North Carolina book? Oh man. Do we, do we really have to go there? I mean, are my bosses listening right now? I got the title <laughs> chapel bill. I mean, we, I, I might, might, I might pass that on to our friend, Wright Thompson. I might just dish Ooh. that off to him. Let him do it. <laughs> I don't think Belichick would want Wright Thompson to go in and do a deep dive <laughs> on his personality. You know how Wright I'm not sure he, Thompson is. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure he wants to see either of us there. Yeah. Uh, great stuff. Really enjoyed the uh, column. Thank you, Seth. And uh, 
We'll talk to you next year with this book. Always, always great to see you, man. Seth Wickersham, ESPN senior writer and uh, new book coming out next year called American Kings, a biography of the quarterback available for pre-order.